Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's lecture. So I'm taking a prosthetic dentistry lecture. So the topic is impressions for completely e-dentulous patients, guys. Okay, that means patients without any teeth, right? And I'm Dr. Priyanka. All right. So coming to the learning outcome, by the end of the lecture, you should be able to define, um, yeah, define impression-related terminologies and prosthetic dentistry explain theories of impression making, select suitable impression technique for medically compromised patient, analyze principles and objective on impression making, demonstrate maxillary and mandibular bottom molding. So yes, it's a big lecture guys, but uh, I'm, I'll be covering Try and understand it. And then later you can refer to books and read it, okay? So impressions in complete dentures. So, a complete denture impression is a negative reg registration of an entire denture bearing, stabilizing, and border seal. Okay, areas present in an e dentulous mouth. Okay, all right. So, basically, recording the whole denture bearing surface and the border seal, which is the PPS. Okay, all right. So, this is a class which is poured after taking impression of an edentulous patient, okay? This is a tray, metallic tray, which we use, okay? So this is a perforated tray. So tray is, um, it's a suitable material to basically take an impression, guys, okay, all right? So a device which carries, controls, confines the impression material while making an impression, okay? So that is what we use, okay? So, we can divide the this so this is known as a preliminary impression uh, impression so that is the primary impression preliminary impression okay so it's divided into two guys okay so this is a chemical irreversible and temporary reversible okay all right so here, uh, examples would be plaster of Paris, Zedinoe, compound, alginate, elastomers, all right? Here, there will be impression, um, sorry, uh, guys, here, there will be an impression compound, okay? And wax and agar, all right, okay? Uh, ZNOE will also come here, guys. Uh, sorry, that's my mistake. I'll correct it in the lecture notes, guys. Yeah. Okay, according to the ability of the set material to be withdrawn over undercuts, right? So, um, any part with, with any uh, processes which doesn't have a straight path of insertion, there can be a line angle which creates an undercut, guys. So, elastic impression materials which are hydrocolloid or rubbers in hydrocolloids it can be agar alginate for uh, elastic impression materials there can be polysulfide polysilicons and polyether okay non-elastic rigid impression materials are impression compound and zedinoe okay zinc oxide eugenol all right so this is just showing some undercuts which are present guys here all right okay so types of impression trays so we do have stock metal and plastic tray, plastic and stock metal tray. So two to three mm clearance is there and should cover the tuberosity and the hamular notch. All right. Okay. And for the lower should also cover the retromolar pad, guys. All right. Okay. Uh, coming to a special tray. So special tray. So these are just the terms, guys. Okay. In the impression uh, techniques, uh, in, in the impression um subject yeah so special tray is a custom-made device prepared for a particular patient which is used to carry confine and control an impression material while making an impression okay so this is an uh, acrylic resin that is a light pure acrylic resin okay all right you can see so objectives of impression making so we have to do preservation of remaining natural structures all right you have to have retention, aesthetic stability, and support. All right. So we'll be discussing them till now. Okay. So coming to the preservation of natural 
the remaining natural structures. So uh, Devan in 1952 um, said the preservation of which remains is of utmost important. Yes, importance that applies to all of the other subjects as well, guys. Okay. So, um, and, and not the meticulous replacement of that which has been lost. Okay. So more important is to preserve which is already present than the replacement. Uh, yes, in a practical sense, both is important, guys. But that is what his uh, statement was. Imprisonment should record details in appropriate form to prevent injury to the tissues okay all right so and relief to non-stress bearing areas thus preventing damage okay so avoid overextension so these are the spacer designs guys okay which we are placing under the spacer okay coming to the retention so the quality inherent of the processes which resist the force of gravity, adhesiveness of foods, and the forces associated with the opening of the jaw, right? So that quality is known as retention. So you see, you're not able to pull the, pull the denture. So it should have a proper seal in the upper and the lower. There are many factors which affect retention, and yes, we'll be covering that later on. So, it is the ability of the denture to withstand, withstand dis displacement against the path of insertion, all right? So, it's the ability of the material to, the, the denture to sit properly, okay, all right? And uh, also withstand displacement, okay? Factors affecting retention, like I told you, so there are six factors, anatomical, the size, quality of the denture bearing areas, so well-rounded ridges will have better retention, resort ridges will have not so good retention okay physiological is the viscosity of saliva thick and thin that also matters guys it will give you a proper adhesion on the surface of the denture and it will enhance the retention physical factors yes are the adhesion cohesion surface tension capillary atmospheric pressure okay these things will be helping us giving adhesion and cohesion okay mechanical factors are the undercuts retentive springs magnets whatever is being used if you want to use any so usually we are using the undercut area sometimes where the disadvantage sometimes yes it creates a problem too in muscular for the teeth setting you use the neutral zone technique guys all right so coming to the stability so the quality of the denture to be firm sturdy or constant to resist displacement by functional stresses and not to be not to be subject to change of position when the forces are applied, all right? So it is an ability of the denture to withstand horizontal forces, guys, okay? So uh, if you place a proper denture in a proper occlusion in the proper surface and you have full coverage, the stability should be there, all right? Okay, so factors affecting stability is the vertical height of the ridge. So Again, same thing, poor ridge will have, res resolve ridge will have poor stability, good ridge, well-rounded ridge will have good stability. Quality of the soft tissue, firm or flabby, so how's that also affects. Quality of the impression that is accurate, smooth or stable. Occlusal plane should be parallel to the ridge, so that is more important. Arrange the teeth in a balanced occlusion, okay? Contour of the polished surface, right? Guys, so you should be knowing this for now. We'll be definitely discussing these in detail in other lectures. Okay, support. So the resistance to vertical forces of mastication. Okay, uh, occlusal forces and other forces applied in the direction towards the denture bearing area. Achieved by covering as much area as possible. This helps to distribute forces. Okay, evenly. All right. Okay, coming to the aesthetics, all right, so thickness of the flange, the way you arrange the teeth, uh, the wax up you have done, the carving of the root surface, the color of the uh, acrylic use, so there are many things. Impression should reproduce the width, height of the sulcus, obviously, all right, and there are the facial components, everything has to be restored, the mucobuckle folds and all the folds, nasal label folds, right, so aesthetics is important, guys. 
Um, so aesthetics is something the patient appreciates and sees, and that's what they understand. They only understand the aesthetics and the function, nothing else. Yeah. So other things we have to see, right? The technical details. So now coming to the principles, we have already learned the objectives, guys. Now coming to the principles, all right? So principles of impression making. So all tissues must be healthy, guys. They should not have ulcers. They should not be red. Uh, there should not be any um, uh, denture stomatitis. There should not be um, any of the other issues, okay? So impression should include the basal seat within the limits, okay? So it should cover the whole basal seat area, borders, must be in harmony with anatomical and physiological limitation of the structures okay so it should cover the whole structure okay selective pressure technique should be used so ideally in a daily world we are using selective pressure technique which is the best and it's used sufficient space should be provided within impression tray for impression material okay so yes there is a sufficient material and if by chance the tray is not fitting or it's short a little bit you can customize the tray and put a little bit wax wax be beading uh, modeling wax beading heat it attach the tray and make it big and uh, then you can take it coming to yeah the other principles so the guiding mechanism the tissue stops and handles should be provided for correct positioning of the tray and even distribution of the material and even force okay all right so these are the tissue stops guys okay I will show you the handles after, all right? Impression should be removed from the mouth without damaging the mucosa. The impression material should used should be dimension, dimensionally stable, guys. Okay. External shape of the impression should be similar to external form of the complete denture. So if that is the shape, usually that is how it will look, all right? Okay. So, okay, the use of stoppers. So, yes, there are stoppers. This stoppers should be cut two to four places so that the special tray touches the ridge in these areas. Okay, all right. So, usually it should spread on both the surface. Okay, it should look a long rectangular shape and there should be four stoppers. All right, even in the maxilla, even in the maxilla, guys. Okay. Now coming to the theories of impression making, okay? So basically this is a classification. So this is how we are covering theories of impression making. So mucostatic or passive impression was given by Richard Sun and Henry, all right? Mucocompressive or functional impression, okay? Which was given by Jones and Green Brothers. Selective pressure was given by Boucher. Okay, so Boucher is also a book, guys, yeah. Uh, depending on the technique, so open and close mouth technique, hand manipulation for functional movements, dynamic impressions, okay? Depending on type of tray, stop tray, custom made tray, this is custom made, this is stop tray, okay? Depending on purpose of uh, impression, diagnostic, primary, and secondary, guys, okay? So this is obviously by the impression compound, guys, okay? This is the uh, green stick which is water molded and then on top you have an uh, ZNOE, right? Zinc oxide butanol impression. All right, depending on the material used, which is agar, guys, alginate, um, zinc oxide butanol impression compound, okay? And there are lots of other wax, silicone, thick gold rubber impressions, all right? Last slide I forgot to mention, so, this is the mucostatic technique, which is also the passive impression. So this can be the suitable impression technique for medically compromised patients. Okay. And guys, so basically this technique, oh, I, sorry, I just realized that um, I have not put a description on it. So it's basically um, you put the pressure on the center of the palate and the peripheral tissues. Okay. And uh, that is how it works, guys. So it uh, slowly goes in and uh, it can be used, guys. Okay, all right. Okay, all right, guys. So you should be knowing that. Okay. 
Okay, coming to the basically use everyday technique uh, in our um, department. So this is a usual technique used uh, everywhere. So that is the selective pressure technique. It combines the principle of both pressure and minimal pressure technique. All right. So in this technique, the idea of tissue preservation is combined with the mechanical factor of achieving retention through minimum pressure, which is within physiologic limit of tissue tolerance. So this theory is based on a thorough understanding of the anatomy physiology of the basal seat and surrounding tissue, right? So you um, give relief to certain areas and uh, so you do design spacers, guys, you do put double spacers, you put uh, holes, you make four holes, uh, sorry, you make four tissue stops, guys, and then you refine it and then you make a special tray and then you do the bottom molding and a secondary impression all right so okay open uh, so the, another technique is open mouth technique so made with tray held by dentist and mouth open so muscle movements may be emphasized and can be seen by the operator okay all right so you just place the material and then you Close mouth impression is a technique. The supporting tissues are recorded in a functional relationship. Okay, so it requires the occlusion rim to be made, bottom moving done, and a final impression made. So dentists can use, uh, you know, hands to manipulate the lips and cheeks. Patient makes functional movements such as swallowing, uh, um, smiling, grinning. Okay, All right. So this also can be taken. You can see that. It's in occlusion and uh, under the denture. So this is close mouth impression technique, okay? Impression procedure in general, guys. Um, the operator position for impression making, remember the maxilla should be at the back, 12 o'clock position. Position for operator and the mandibular should be around 10, 11 o'clock position, okay? That's how you take an impression properly, all right? And preferred while making the patient sit up straight, all right? In mandible, you can have uh, the patient had tilted, but everything should be straight exactly in the back. All right. So selection of the tray. So workable thickness must be four mm. Border should be two mm short of the vestibule. Uh, altered in area hindering the ridge. So any hindrance of the tray, you can alter, guys. Okay. All right. And uh, you should see that there is some space for the material to flow. Okay, it should not be touching the teeth, otherwise there will be no place. Okay, so objective is to obtain the primary impression or the preliminary impression that is slightly or extended around the body. All right, uh, plastic tray, spatula, rubber bowl, measuring cup for water, spatula, alginate. So you put two scoops, you put the amount of water required, you have a uniform mix and you load on the tray and you put it in the patient's mouth. Okay guys, pressure material is loaded in the tray and placed in the patient's mouth. This is how maxilla looks, this is how mandible looks. The tray is left in the mouth for one minute. After the initial set, the impression is removed and inspect inspected to ensure all basal seed is included. The impression is poured in dental plaster or POP. Okay, all right. So, guys, I tell everyone in the department also, you do not take impression only with your hand. You also take it with your eyes. Guys, it's a hand and eye coordination. You have to lift up the lip and put the tray properly. If you think somewhere the material is short, you can definitely put the remaining material, which is lying here and there, in the deficient area. Okay, and then you have to do all the bottom movements for the upper and then also respectively for the lower to get well rounded borders there should be no exposure no sharpness okay this is axis you can cut that out and then pour them off okay all right okay so this is how exactly you do it for an impression compound which you all do not use i used to use it in my time guys so you have to it's a hard compound you have to heat up water you have to knead it to so you have to put it uh it's certain temperature will soften and then you have to knead it properly uh take uh so now you take a known for perforated tray guys edentulous non-perforated tray you place it there and you take an impression that is how it should look okay all right and yes you can ma manipulate this here and there and uh, yes this uh, is a more accurate technique for taking an edentulous impression guys okay 
So disinfection. So how do we, we immerse the disinfectant for 10 minutes? 2% um, glutal dehyde or idopore. So usually we are using 2% glutal dehyde. And uh, you spray it like we have in our department. First, you have to wash it properly in the water. Dry it. Spray 2% glutal dehyde. Wait for 10 minutes. Let it dry. And place it in a paper bag. And then you can... It, we do not place it in a... Sorry, in a plastic bag. Because we go and directly pour the impressions. So guys, any impression you take, ideally, it should be poured immediately. Okay? Pouring and... Uh, Requirement of castle pour the plaster of impression in three steps done within 15 minutes after taking impression We should have 10 mm thickness. Okay, so uh, guys what I tell you all to do just pour the impression then from base former You can make a base so base making is very important in impression impression is incomplete without bases guys. Okay Pouring should be done from the distal end So you yes, you can put a little bit material liquid material first tap 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 so you remove the air bubble and then you can uh, proceed further and pour the thick material on top, okay? So it should be free of voids. Record the details accurately. Extend, extend 3 to 4 mm beyond the retromolar pad and it should be moisture free. Okay, like that. So you place one layer and then you place the thick layer on top and you tap, tap, tap and let it be settled. Okay, guys, this is... Uh, with the base for the maxilla and mandible this is the mandible impression which is taken okay which is made um special tray guys okay so we have talked about it before again i'm saying it again because now i'm going to start with the bottom molding procedure so this is the second part of the lecture guys yeah so i'm going to demonstrate the maxillary mandibular bottom molding principles or the way you do it so Special tray is a custom-made device prepared for a particular patient which is used to carry confined control and impression material while making an impression, okay? So special tray for the upper and uh, maxilla and uh, for the mandible, it has a base, guys. If you think the base is too thin, we can make a base with the base, all right? Why is it needed uh, to support the green stick compound, guys? So special tray, basically, is to carry the impression material, okay? And uh, yes, act like an impression tray and then uh, for a final impression too. So to make a final impression, to provide even thickness on the impression material, right? So requirement should be, it should be well adapted to the primary cast. To remain thick in the palatal, palate area and lingual flange for rigidity. To remain relief should be near the sulcus, okay? Should be free of voids and projections in the tissue surface right so uh all these things have to be taken care of guys okay the relief should be there okay the flange should be okay and it should be free of voids and projections guys. okay all right so material used for the custom tray is the polystyrene cold cure resin shellac light cure resin guys so here we are using light cure resins okay these usually were used before, long before, guys, okay? So now, in our department, we are using light cure resin, okay? So conditioning the primary cast, so yes, you have to um, uh, soak it in water, draw the outlines on the cast. So you usually draw the three outlines, guys. So you draw a uh, sulcus depth. And then 2mm short will be the spacer and then will be a relief wax um, spacer. Okay, alright. So there are two spacers and then uh, there will be a special tray. Okay, so special tray is usually 2mm short of the depth of the sulcus. Okay, so block out the undercuts using black wax. Any of the undercuts has to be blocked out. Otherwise, the tray will be very difficult to remove and place back. Okay, so place the wax spacer on the last. Why is the spacer needed, guys? To record tissues in the state of anatomical rest, okay? So this is spacer example for the lower and there are the rest, okay? So also for the stability of impression making and relief for non-stress bearing areas, okay, guys? So you should know the non-stress bearing and stress bearing areas in the maxillary mandible, okay? Spacer should be 2 mm thick and, um, yes, made by more. Okay, fabrication of a custom tray. If it's a cold cure, 
resin it can be a sprinkle on technique a dot technique and light cure technique so with the light cure all right so light cure technique you take the uh, palette you, you take the uh, impression material and uh, you adapt it well on the ridge all right and uh, then you cure it in the light curing unit there okay that's how we do it in our department so i used to use it in my time the cold cure guys handle so place and uh, anteriorly 3 mm thick 8 mm high should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth okay so the dimension of the handle should be proper uh, proper all right and it should be soaking the water to prevent any wrappage okay so basically guys you have a handle to hold the tray properly in position and so you can do the movements otherwise you will not be able to hold the tray okay in the patient this is a primary cast guys okay so you have drawn all the lines made a spacer now you're reliefing the undercuts this is a lower cast okay if you're using a dot technique or a light cure technique uh, you will uh, probably make adapt the sheet adapt the material on top and then you can cure it okay so now finally making the secondary impression or the final impression guys so first we have to do a bottom molding on the special tray guys this is a single step or incremental so here you're we are practicing students are practicing incremental technique guys okay which is more accurate so a wash impression afterwards on the bottom molded area is taken with zn oxide non eugenol light body silicon so depending on the case we do it usually zinc oxide eugenol is used for edentulous ridges guys and light body is used if there are teeth in the mouth okay Non-eugenol paste also can be used for the patient who's a little allergic and have a reaction to zinc oxide, which, uh, yes, few times are seen. Rarely, but yes, it is present. So recording the PPS, that is a posterior palatal seal area. So that is the soft tissue along the junction of the hard and soft palate on which the pressure within the physiological limit of the tissue can be applied by the denture to aid in the retention of the denture. So... I covered it in the beginning of the lecture. So retention comes for the PPS from the seal, palatal seal. So this is the PPS, okay? So there are a few methods to record it. Conventional approach, fluid wax technique, arbitrary scraping of the master class, and extended palatal technique, okay? So it can be recorded in these four manners, okay? Coming to the bottom molding or peripheral tracing, okay? Also known as peripheral tracing. So this is bottom molding done where? on the uh, edges or borders of a special tray okay so the shaping of an impression material by manipulation or action of tissue adjacent to the borders of the impression okay all right so you can see you can appreciate it in the mandible and the maxilla right? okay material used for bottom only low fusing command that is the green stick compound guys so incremental technique can be used softened uh, modeling wax soft softened modeling wax can also be used uh sorry softened modeling plastic impression compound over the uh, alcohol torch flame and place it over the border of the tray can also be used okay so after t tempering it in water bath for 70 degrees fahrenheit the border mold uh can be in the mouth and also poly ether can be used as a single step technique all right okay so now we're going to talk about the bottom molding of the labial sulcus guys so in the region of the labial sulcus the upper lip is elevated extended outward and then pulled downward and inward so basically outward downward inward guys okay so when you come and learn clinically you will be able to demonstrate and show you better okay so re-soften the compound and repeat this procedure to re-establish a proper bottle seal, okay? So now you have to remember that the bottom molding material should be deep in the sulcus and covering the whole sulcus, all right? It should be covering the whole sulcus, guys, all right? Uh, that's the whole point of doing a bottom molding, okay? 
so bottom molding of the buckle sulcus guys so in this region the buck buckle frenum is there so cheek is elevated then pulled outward downward and inward okay so same thing outward downward inward for the maxilla these uh remain the same okay all right the movements and it's the opposite for the mandible okay so move the cheek backward and forward so like left and right guys okay and uh, yeah so it will be uh, how during eating and smiling and you can also do a round rolling motion all right board it and you have to uh have the patient sit in an angulated position and you have to say ah 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 okay so short and long ah ah so you can read about this in detail okay coming to border molding in the mandible so it's the opposite like i told you labial flange is molded by lifting lower lip outward downward and inward okay Outward, upward, inward, backward, and forward for the buccal frenum. So you'll understand and realize, guys, do it in your own cheeks and you'll understand how it works. Okay, posteriorly, the cheek is pulled buccally, cheek is moved upward and inward. Anterior lingual flange is molded by asking patient to protrude trunk against the front part of the palate. Distal end of the lingual flange is molded by asking the patient to protrude the tongue out. Finally, patient is asked to open wide. Okay, all right. So, in the mandible, the extra structure here is the tongue. In the palate, there is the PPS. Okay, so you have to tell the patient to take out the tongue and touch the tongue left and right vestibule. Okay, inside. And open wide, close, open. Okay. All right, so tray preparation before impression material, okay? So wax pressure should be removed when you're taking a secondary impression, okay? Remove 0 0.5 to 1 mm of the material and uh, also scrape the PPS, okay? The flanges and border should be 2.5 3 mm thick. Uh, drill holes in tray to prevent uh, tissue displacement during impression. So to prevent tissue displacement you have relief holes which are made in the maxilla and in the mandible. I just want to talk about the importance of the PPS guys so primary purpose is the retention and PPS that has been correctly diagnosed and incorporated into prosthesis reduces a gag reflex, prevents food from getting under the denture base, aids in compensating for dimensional changes during curing, acts as a stress-bearing area all right okay uh coming to a secondary impression so neg it, it a secondary impression basically is this secondary impression which you take on top of the bottom molding tray remove the spacer make relief holes and then you take it so that is basically a negative likely mess made for the purpose of fabricating a prosthesis it should have finer details of denture bearing areas at rest okay so bottom molding or peripheral shear sealing and then you make a wash impression so it ideally should be thin it's it's like a wash impression okay thin impression yeah and the material of choice can be zinc oxide eugenol paste light body elastomer impression material okay so the requirements are impression must be free of voids which is rectified by wax uh disinfected with ido4 and two percent uh, or two percent glutal dehyde for 10 minutes that's what we do here okay so guys this is a primary cast under the special tray special tray with the handle we have done bottom molding they are doing the bottom molding movements okay you can see bottom molding is done now you take a secondary impression all right you place it into the mouth and that is the secondary impression which is done all right okay so now coming to the last uh, one or two slides guys so beading and boxing is done after you pour impression okay so that is to get a proper so to prevent the width and the height of the sulcus okay uh i'm meaning to record it guys okay to record the width and the height of the sulcus and to prevent the displacement of the impression material okay so mainly preserve the mucobuccal and mucolingual borders materials used are in beading you use a uh, utility wax and boxing uh, plaster with pumice okay all right 
So also beading, boxing, waxes are available. So that's how it looks like. And then you can forecast. So you'll get a proper land area, the width and the height. Okay. This is the master class, guys. So you get it after pouring from that uh, impression. All right. So a uh, replica of, of the two structures, uh, residual ridge area and other parts of the dental arch or facial structures used to fabricate a dental restoration or processes, okay? So basically this is the class which is obtained after the bottom molding procedure, which you call a final class or, or a master class, all right, guys? Okay, thank you so much for patient listening, guys, and hope you understood the lectures. Uh, so... Uh, there are many textbooks which you can refer from. Sorry. So uh, there are many textbooks which you can refer from. So standard textbooks are Boucher. Okay. Boucher is the name of the author. Zarb is another textbook. That is the name of author. Winkler is another textbook. Okay. So these are a few of the standard textbooks for reading complete dentures, guys. Or And if you still have a problem, I am always on... Uh, Polyclinic. I'm always in Polyclinic 3 on level uh, 20 in the Prosto floor, Prosto lab. Um, please come and ask us questions and kindly read, guys. And thank you so much for, so much for patient listening.